Salut, c'est Marie de Just French It. Welcome in this new podcast. Are you the kind of person who takes notes? I know I am. I write down about everything all the time. The other day, I even screenshot some things I said to my friends because I got an idea from it and I wanted to, you know, store the trigger, store what made me think uh, of this idea. <laughs> Please don't be freaked out. I promise I am a more or less normal person. <laughs> But this event gave me an idea because, you know, uh, I teach as well. And I realized that I have two kinds of students. The first kind is the kind who take notes of everything that I say. It's usually students who have a notebook in which they first put the date and then they write down pretty much anything and everything that we talk about during the session. Vocabulary, grammar points, examples, sentences, even cultural points as well. At the end of the lesson, they have a page, or sometimes two, filled with notes. It's really heavy stuff. And then on the other hand, I have another kind of student, and this kind of student is the kind of student who don't take notes at all. They like to focus on communication during the class. They go into details, you know, with me. They repeat what I say. They, you know, ask further questions. They are very, very active in their communication and during the class. But at the end of the lesson, they simply say goodbye and they leave. Both of those kinds uh, are approaching learning very differently, right? And you might be thinking that there's one kind that is superior to the other one. Or you identify yourself more with one of those two kinds. I'm actually curious about that. So shoot me an email or answer in the comments. What kind of learner are you? Do you take plenty of notes or not at all? What's your style? Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> But yes, so the problem with the two styles, and yes, because there is a problem with two styles. One of them is not superior than the other one. Neither of them has a, a superior strategy. The one who, the kind of student who takes notes is taking way, way too much notes. And I will be talking more about that in another podcast this week and why it's really not good to do that and what kind of mistakes you are probably making if you are taking too much notes. But basically, it's a strategy that will leave you completely overwhelmed. And that is probably, in the end, not simple and very complicated. Because when you are taking notes, plus when you are taking notes, actually, you allocate part of your brain to writing down, which means that you are not as concentrated on the course itself, on what is being said. Um, and when you are taking notes, you know, and you do that, you, you are not listening anymore, or not so much. But you know, writing down is good. But during a lesson, you want to get in as much French or English or Spanish or whatever your language you are learning as possible. Taking notes of everything is a sure way to waste this opportunity that you have to listen to someone speaking your target language, right? And speak as well. And you know how much speaking is important when it comes to language learning. You could do much simpler and have better results, actually. On the other hand, if you are not taking any notes at all, at the end of the day, you don't have material to go back to because taking notes allow you to overcome several problems, right? Um, first big problem is that your brain is float and you know that because you've experienced it. Not being able to remember a grammar rule, a vocabulary word or half remembering it, you know, not remembering the letters in the right order and things like that. Or even just being completely wrong about it. You've experienced this, you know, not being able to remember outside of your language learning as well, right? What did you eat for breakfast yesterday? <laughs> What color was the car behind you this morning? What was the name of your first crush? Those are typical questions you will answer you know, wrongly or will have a hard time answering. Plus, taking notes is very good because it helps you with memorization. You've heard about auditive memory and all the kinds of memories out there, which means that your brain is more likely to remember something when you associate an action to it. And there's actually one that is related to muscles and action and movement. Writing is a movement, right? You are making a movement. So writing down something helps you remembering it because you are triggering part of your brain at the same time. And you've taken action on it. So it's something that is good for memorization. And third big benefit of taking notes is that it's really good way to motivate you, right? I know that you feel very satisfied 
when you finish a notebook, like when you turn the page and oh, there is no more page and you have fill a notebook that is filled with notes. That's, you know, when I know that when I see the page, it's fill and fill. It gives me a feeling of accomplishment. I feel like I'm doing and creating something, right? And it can be hard to get that feeling of accomplishment in language learning, in language learning especially, because progress takes time and sometimes you don't see the results yourself be before you can hear yourself speaking at a very good level. So adding words, sentences and more things to my notes or your notes in writing down helps me keep at it, helps me see that I'm making progress, I'm learning, right? So I want to do it because it makes me feel good. And so, uh, and so on and so on, and it's a, it's a virtual cycle. So all of that is super cool, but you know, how can you not overwhelm yourself and get results from taking notes? Well, I have a few solutions out there for you. I'm first thinking of, you know, writing a journal. Journaling, you know, not like a 15 year old girl. <laughs> you can look into bullet journaling, for example, which is a journal system that allows you to have a summary of what you are writing at the beginning of your journal. With that, you can actually uh, go back to whatever you were learning and you can, you know, look for stuff. And if you are crafty and you like to hand draw things like this, it can be a really good thing to do. I have to admit, though, that it's kind of time consuming and you have to learn the ropes of bullet journaling. It's not as straightforward. If you just take a journal and start writing down what you want and then you don't remember which page it is that you put it on, you're going to have a hard time, right, trying to find that thing. I find actually that bullet journaling is not very practical, although if you already know what it is, it can be a really good alternative. But I think that practicality is essential when you want to be efficient and when you want to be organized, right? Plus, a journal, a bullet journal, is paper-based, which is cool to look at, but it's a bit inconvenient, right? You have to take it with you all the time. So what I'll advise you to do is go digital. Because when you go digital, you can rewrite on top of your notes, you can attach links, pictures, it's easy, it's fast, it's simple, and most of all, it is very convenient, right? With the cloud and all your devices that you have around you all the time, it is very convenient. But even then, when you go digital, right, you need a system because you can't just simply write stuff. You need a system that is going to allow you to research easily into your notes. So my solution for you is to create a database, a bank, and I'm going to call it a bank. A bank is a place where you store your knowledge. So when it comes to language learning, it can be vocabulary, expressions, links to useful material, grammar points, cultural knowledge, etc. If you are thinking right now that it sounds tedious, right? Because the word bank kind of sounds like a big thing, right? I assure you that it's not that tedious. It takes less than 10 minutes to set up. And it's something that you can have with you all the time that you can feel however you want in which you can research things from which you can learn and know which piece of content you don't know yet. It has plenty of advantages and more importantly, it is going to make a breeze of taking notes for your language learning. Right. And using this bank is what I call the bank method. Right. And it's my new course on the Just French School. It's I called it the bank method because it works just like a bank. And I want you to know more. And if you want to know more about it, you can click on the link in the description box below the video. This course is available at a special launch price as usual until next week and I really advise you to take it if you intend to learn French or any other language on your own. It really truly has changed the way I learn languages and take notes. But let me explain exactly what it is before you go and check that out. So what we're going to do together is that we are going to create this personalized bank filled with what you need to know, what you know already, uh, but that is not fluffy extra words that you'll never use, right? You want a bank that is full of your stuff, right? Not um, a dictionary, even, you know, if, if it's something that you're just going to fill without looking at it, then you just take a dictionary and that's exactly the same thing, right? I'm going to show you exactly also how to fuel this database as you go on your language learning, because as I said, you cannot just put any words in there. You have to put words that are uh, relevant to you, your goal, your level, right? 
Uh, I'm going to show you actually how you can use it to learn anything, anything. It can be languages, but it can also be, you know, information based stuff. And also, I'm going to show you how to use the this database, this bank, to better memorize and to have a more, a better, um, a simpler experience over the long term, right? The whole system is very, very easy and very practical because that's the goal here, right? It can be used by anyone, whatever your level is, whatever your learning style is as well, because that's important to take into account when you are choosing a method to learn. What your goal is and also the language you are learning. If you want more information about this, you can click on the link in the description box below the video. Check out what I'm going to teach you in this course. Then you just click and enroll and it, the course will be added to your personal account. Setting up this database takes 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, you could already have your bank set. All right. You would just need to fill it. C'est parti. I'll see you in the first module.